Do you want to learn Arabic and Islamic sciences with distinguished teachers accompanied with the best brotherhood and sisterhood in London? Enroll now on site at Medina College or study online on the portal for £10 a month at mclportal.com. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. A 30 hadith on the fiqh of Siyam. This hadith and Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhuma. قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله إن أمي ماتت وليها صوم الشهر أفأقضيه عنها سعد الله بن أباس رضي الله عنه ما يسد أي من كم تذ مسنج في الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدو مسنج في الله my mother passed away and she has a whole month fasting that she owes should I make it up on her behalf. Qala law kana ala ummika daynun akunta qadiyahu anha. Qala na'am qala fadayn Allah ahaq an yuqdi. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied and said, If your mother uh, had a debt, would you repay it? He said yes. So then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The debt of Allah has more right to be repaid. وفي رواية جاءت امرأة إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت يا رسول الله إن أمي ماتت وليها صوم نذر أفأصوم عنها قال أفرأيت لو كان على أمك دين فقضيته أكان يؤدي ذلك عنها قالت نم قال فصومي عن أمك uh, also in another riwayah of this hadith, a woman came to the Messenger of Allah and said, Oh Messenger of Allah, my mother passed away and she had a, another psalm that she owed. Shall I fast on her behalf? The Messenger of Allah said, If your mother had a debt, would you, do you think, would you repay it? Uh, and would that remove it from her? And the message, she said yes, so the Messenger of Allah said, Fasumi and Ummuk, so therefore fast on behalf of your mother. So uh, the general meaning of this hadith, first of all, is that this hadith has two narrations. And what's apparent from the, uh, from the context of the hadith is that it's two separate incidents that happened. The first one is a man that came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and told him about his mother passing away and that she owed one month should he make it up? The second one is that a woman came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she had a, another psalm to make up, should he fast uh, on her behalf? And then the Messenger of Allah gave the verdict for both cases that they, yes, they should fast on their behalf. And then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave an analogy or an example that would make the meaning clear and also make it uh, easy to understand. That is that if they had the debt that they owed, would you make and repay the debt on their behalf? Uh, and the answer was yes. So then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them that the uh, Psalm is a debt which is owed to Allah, i.e. a debt, i.e. something which is owed, because you have to it was an obligation that wasn't fulfilled. So if the debts of the creation have to be fulfilled and the debts of the Creator have more right to be fulfilled. Ma yu'khadh min al-hadith. What is benefited or what are the benefits or rulings that can be taken from this hadith? The first one is that the uh, uh, first evidence, it shows that fasting is made up on the deceased, whether that fast is a fast which was made an obligation on themselves, by themselves, through taking the oath, or whether it was a fast which was an obligation in and of itself. The second narration shows that the uh, fast which is an oath which is made an obligation on yourself has to be fulfilled. And what's apparent between these two hadith is that they were separate incidents that happened. So each one remains as a proof in and of itself without having to reconcile between them by saying one is mutlaq and one is muqayyid. Right, so what does that mean? That would mean that the first hadith it just men mentions fasting. It doesn't say it was a month of Ramadan that she owed. It doesn't specify how many fasts it was and or the reason behind the fast. But the second one mentions specifically a sifa or a quality 
which is linked to the ruling, i.e. fasting of another fast, the oath. So ordinarily, if it was uh, the same issue, it would be uh, if they weren't separate questions from separate people, separate inc inc incidents, for example, or you would say that, okay, the second hadith is specific, the first hadith is general, will we'll, uh, use a specific hadith to restrict the general hadith, and you'll say that it applies to a fast from an oath. Okay, but that's not the case in this example because it's two separate hadith, two separate incidents, two separate people. So each one remains as an evidence for its point. Uh, which is why Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Sa'idi and Sheikh Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah they have the view that uh, you make up fast whether it was a fast for Ramadan or a fast for an oath. Uh, also, as well, uh, the generality of the hadith it shows us that because the hadith mentions an illa or a reason it, I, I, it says uh, if there was a uh, or mentions a reason that if you had a debt owed financial debt or money debt to somebody would you pay it back uh, no then the answer was yes uh, also that so that shows you for example the uh, this hadith is often used in the books of usul al fiqh to show that Qiyas, which is analogy or another word for analogy perhaps is one of the evidences in the Sharia right because here the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he gave an example and he gave an example through analogy with something which they already understood and accepted to prove the ruling on an issue that they didn't understand or didn't necessarily uh, uh, know about Right, so this hadith itself shows the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam using a type of analogy with a debt which is owed in this in, in of monetary debt to apply to a debt which is owed to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and the purpose of these examples is to make things easier to understand. Uh, now, another benefit which is taken from this hadith that the scholars mention. Is that when Allah, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the day of Allah has a more right to be fulfilled, this shows that when a person passes away and leaves behind inheritance, that the if he owes zakat, zakat should be distributed before the inheritors split their uh, uh, the inheritance. So there's a tartib or there's an order. As it pertains to leaving behind inheritance, what should be paid for first? So, for example, there's the kefen, which is the burial and the shroud. Then there's the debts which he owes to Allah, meaning the zakat, which wasn't paid. He debts which he owes to other people, monetary debts. All of that happens before the uh, before the, the the wealth is split. Uh, no. So, if for example, there's uh, tazahamat, are you meaning that? Uh, you know, you've got you're either going to give the debts that are owed to people, or you pay zakat. You can't do both. Which one should be given precedence? The scholars say that based on they use this hadith to show that zakat needs to be given precedence before the debts that were owed to people are paid from the wealth that the deceased leaves behind. Some people say no, it's the same. There should be the percentage should be should be done based upon the percentage, and it should be split that way. So that's the hadith which shows making up uh, fasts, whether it's a obligatory fast like Ramadan, which was oblig made an obligation in the deen, or an obligatory fast that a person made upon himself by taking an oath and the like. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullah.